Hola a todos, hello everyone, and welcome to today's video. We are going to be talking all about yoga props. For those of you who don't know me, if this is the first time you're ever seeing my face, welcome! My name is Sekhmet Divine, aka The Brown Yogi, and I am an anti-racist Raja yoga teacher. I've been practicing yoga now for about three years, and during that time, yoga props have helped me tremendously in my yoga journey. So before we dive into my favorite yoga props, let's talk a little bit about why we use yoga props. Props while you're practicing yoga can help us do a variety of things. First off, it can make poses feel a lot more accessible. When I think about this, I think about lunge and if I'm trying to lift up my back and lengthen my body and also reach down to the ground, well, sometimes it feels difficult to do all of those things. By using a prop would help me find more ease. It would bring the ground up to me so that I would have a little bit more of an easier time extending through my spine, reaching out with my hands and not craning or sacrificing alignment in order to reach the ground. Props can also help us go deeper in poses. For example, when I try out crow pose, if I don't use a block or a prop, it is more difficult for me to get deep into my hips and to place my knee on my shoulder. But if I have a prop and I boost the ground up to me, I can get deeper into crow. And while props can help us go deeper in poses, it can actually also help us relax more in restorative poses too. For example, in cobbler's pose, when I have tightness in my hips, a block on the side of each of my legs can allow me to open up without so much strain on my body. It feels more gentle. Overall, props are a wonderful way to slowly and safely increase our flexibility and our strength. It helps us extend our reach. It helps us find more balance in poses too, like half moon pose. I can focus a little bit more on balancing instead of trying to not fall over. In general, I highly, highly recommend people to use props, whether they just started yoga yesterday or if they've been practicing yoga for several years. It doesn't matter if you've been practicing for five, 10 years, yoga props are still going to be a wonderful addition to your practice. I want to quickly mention too that even though I'm gonna be showing you props that I use, if you don't have something like this or if it's not accessible to you, you can always find substitutions for it. And in fact, I will mention some later on. So without further ado, let's talk about my favorite yoga props. So the first one is going to be my catch-all, a yoga block. And you can see that my cats have enjoyed um, a little bit. It's kind of like a cheddar block to them, I guess. Um, but a yoga block is like the catch-all yoga prop. Like it will help you do whatever it is you want to do, whether it's relaxation, going deeper in poses, whatever the case may be, yoga blocks are an essential because they can do pretty much everything. Now, these are super cheap. You can find them at TJ Maxx for like four bucks. You can find a pair for like five, six, seven, or eight bucks. You can also go to Five Below. You can go to Amazon. There's a host of places that you can go to get yoga blocks for very cheap. Next is this yoga strap, and this one's from Gaim. So is the yoga block, but it doesn't matter. Gaim's a good brand, but like I said, um, the brand doesn't really matter. I love using this. Um, it really just helps me extend my reach, uh, especially if I am doing like maybe let's say like a hamstring stretch. Um, well, I'm kind of short, and um, you know if it's been a couple of days since I've practiced, my reach is not going to be as deep as it would be if I was practicing daily. So having a yoga strap is really really great because it helps me reach longer and it also helps me stay stable. Let's say I'm practicing forearm handstands, I can loop it around my shoulders and um, tighten it up so that I can practice on staying in alignment and you know I don't have to worry about my elbows going everywhere like they can really help me stay stable. 
Another prop I really enjoy is actually having an extra mat on hand. So what I actually do is I will sometimes put a second mat underneath mine. A lot of yoga mats are very, very thin. I actually have one of the thicker sizes you can find, which is about 6.5. Um, there are exercise mats that do go thicker, but usually for a yoga mat, um, they tend to be very thin. So I like to put a second mat underneath just to add some extra thickness so I can have a little bit more cushion. Speaking of cushion, another thing I I like to use is actually a gardener's knee pad yes yeah, so this is not a yoga prop itself but I have come to really adore it. A dear friend of mine, I will link her down below, she has an awesome podcast called um, Improvising with Lori and um, I saw her put this on her page a while ago and I was like that is amazing so I went out and got myself one from Ollie's I think this was like three or four dollars um, maybe if you have a good uh, dollar tree near you maybe they might have this for a dollar but along the same lines as using the yoga mat it adds extra cushion so I like to put this under my knees maybe under my wrist just anything where I might be putting a lot of weight or pressure on a body part and I want to give myself some extra loving especially my knees this one one is quite an interesting yoga prop this is a yoga wheel and now my journey with this yoga wheel has been uh, quite an interesting one I am about 410 so I'm pretty short and this diameter is about 12 inches and so it is slightly too big for me but now that I've had this for a little bit over two years my body has definitely gotten adjusted to it but that's just to say that if you are shorter, maybe you want to consider getting a yoga wheel with a smaller diameter. It is kind of difficult to find it. And that was my difficulty was I spent $60 on a 10 inch diameter wheel for it to never get shipped to my house. And then I moved. And so they decided to um, ship it out two months after I had left. So it was a whole uh, shit show, so to speak. But if you are average height, the 12 inch diameter should not be any issues for you at all. Um, like I said, I did buy this several years ago, so I'm not sure how expensive they are now, but this one wasn't very expensive at all. I bought this when I was in college, so I can't imagine I spent more than like 30 bucks after spending $60 on a wheel and never getting it. Yeah, I don't think I paid more than like 20 or 30 bucks for this. Uh, and this is the Rehut Yoga Wheel. This really helps me open up my back. Uh, it also has been able to serve as a, a prop in some certain balancing poses. Um, but for the most part, I usually focus this with both opening my back and increasing my back flexibility. I love, love, love this. Um, this is definitely not a necessary yoga prop for your yoga journey. However, I just really enjoy playing around on it. Um, it's been a great addition for me. And next we have pillows and blankets and I don't I have pillows up here but I have a blanket down here and I love love using pillows and blankets in my yoga practice it helps bring a beautiful element of comfort and ease and gentleness into my practice um, and the beautiful thing about blankets and pillows is that if you don't have any other of these things a pillow and a blanket will serve you so well that you won't need anything else right like you can fold the blanket and make it thicker or make it use it like a bolster um the pillow too like there's so many things you can do with them and so when i spoke about earlier about how there are substitutes for all of these a pillow and a blanket or a towel textbooks anything that you have laying around with a little bit of imagination can absolutely become an essential tool to your yoga practice and now i'm going to do some honorary mentions these don't specifically target my actual yoga practice but rather serve as an addition to the ambiance to help me relax and feel more comfortable some of these things that i use are an, an essential oil diffuser i love having the addition of aromatherapy in my yoga practice so if i'm not using my oil diffuser i might be using some incense both of those are just going to serve as bringing that additional note of healing and tranquility. I also enjoy using crystals if I am practicing outside. I like to bring my crystals outside with me so they get charged by the sun and then they also offer their healing properties while I am doing yoga. Another great thing I like to recommend to people is using music or healing sound. You can make a playlist full of songs that make you feel good in your body while you're practicing 
in yoga or you can go on YouTube and find a healing frequency video. Maybe you do nature sounds, something like that. Those things also just bring another layer of healing into your yoga practice. And lastly, I sometimes like to use an eye mask. So an eye masks are those like sleeping masks that people use and I like to use them when I am doing meditation or more restorative yoga because it helps block out the light and sometimes when I remove that sense of light I'm able to go deeper into my relaxation. Alright guys so that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have some new ideas if you are a beginner to yoga. I hope you now have an idea of maybe some things you can use around the house or maybe some things you want to invest your money into um, to help your yoga journey. Remember guys, you don't need to have super, super fancy props. If you aren't able to afford it, then by all means, do not make yourself worry that you're not able to be a real yogi. There is no such thing as a real yogi. You already are one. I am one. We all are one. Um, so that being said, make sure you are kind to yourself. And um, on that note, peace, love, and light. Namaste.